Hey all, welcome to Shatrick. This is Raj here. Uh, friends, we should all thank our subscriber Remy Mustafa for this video. Remy gave me a heads up that Excision Bio has received the fast track designation from FDA. Uh, and friends, as you know, uh, this is a genomic uh, investment channel and I spend a good deal of time uh, looking at uh, the 20, 25 odd shares that we are tracking uh, from the genomic uh, field. Uh, from an investment perspective, and I do only one video every week on HIV. So I would have missed this news and I might have caught up with it maybe a month down the line. So thanks, Rami. And also any other subscribers have such uh, uh, information, please pass it on to me and I'll come up with a video for the rest of you. That said, in today's video, let's talk uh, about this and understand what it means, how much time do they save due to the fast track uh, designation. I am doubly happy that we now have a community here at ShareTrek that is keeping the channel at the cutting edge of information when it comes to HIV therapy news. So thanks, Rami, on behalf of all subscribers, Patreons, members, as well as from me. That said, let's get started. Welcome back, friends. Excision Bio is a private company and it has been uh, working on EBT-101 therapy for HIV. The news is that it has received FDA fast track designation. If you watch this video to the end, you will understand how EBT-101 works, why it is safe, what is a FDA fast track designation and how it will help Excision Bio with EBT-101 in terms of advantages as compared to the standard track. For those that did not see any of my earlier videos on EBT 101 and how it works, I would request that you please see my previous videos from a year ago on EBT 101. Here is a very brief summary. EBT 101 is likely to be a one-time cure for HIV. It operates by making two cuts in the integrated retroviral DNA of HIV to remove large portions of the HIV genome and prevent HIV from escaping and reproducing. After exposure via bodily fluids, HIV infects human helper T cells or CD4 T cells by binding to the uh, CD4 or cluster of differentiation 4 receptor and the ke uh, chemokine um, co-receptor expressed on the cell surface. After gaining access to the host cell, HIV uses re reverse transcriptase uh, to create a complementary DNA strand of its RNA genome, which it then integrates into the host cell's uh, genome. Uh, integration of HIV into the host genome means that the host cell uh, copies the virus alongside its own genetic material. When enough virions or virus, uh, uh, viral particles have accumulated in the host cell, the host cell will then burst open, allowing the new virions to escape and infect more CD4 T cells spreading throughout the host body. This is the modus operandi of uh, the HIV virus and because it's a retrovirus, it uh, embeds itself into the human genome. Now coming to EBT-101 itself, EBT-101 is delivered via an adeno-associated virus or AAV. The therapy implies a Cas9 nuclease uh, variant isolated from Staphylococcus uh, aureus, SA Cas9, which is uh, smaller than the original uh, Cas9 and is therefore more suitable for in vivo uh, delivery with uh, multiple uh, sgRNAs, which means the payload can fit into the AAV virus. And those of you who have been watching my investment uh, videos on uh, CRISPR-related uh, companies, uh, some of the drawbacks we spoke about uh, CRISPR-Cas9 combo was the big size so that transport mechanization uh, mechanism becomes a problem uh, for the payload. Uh, the other thing we spoke about was double-stranded cuts and the um, potential errors. And the third thing we spoke about was uh, off-base edits. So these are all the things that we uh, spoke about. And also we spoke about another problem of certain regions of the DNA if, if it is edited. Uh, the results are carcinogenic. So uh, having said all those uh, uh, things, at this point of time, uh, what we need to appreciate is that this uh, Cas9 variant that is being used here is smaller which will then allow the AAV to be having more space to carry payload. And that's where uh, multiple sgRNAs will be put so that they can do multiple cuts. I'm going to talk to you about sgRNA. So before we proceed, let's, let me explain the term sgRNA as we are using it for the first time uh, in this channel. sgRNA stands for short guided RNA. It's a tiny molecule that acts like a, a GPS for a revolutionary 
uh, gene editing tool called CRISPR Cas9. Uh, at this point of time, using the term revolutionary gene editing tool uh, seems a bit uh, um, antiquated because so many people are using CRISPR and variants of Cas9 and uh, other Cas proteins to do the editing. But um, uh, imagine you want to edit uh, the spelling of a word in a book, but you can't erase or rewrite directly. That's where CRISPR comes in. Uh, CRISPR-Cas9 is like a pair of molecular scissors that can cut DNA. The sgRNA is the part that tells the scissors exactly where to cut. It's like giving the scissors the correct page number and line where the spelling mistake is. Once the sgRNA guides uh, the Cas9 scissors to the right spot in the DNA, then the Cas9 makes the cut. Uh, this cut tricks the uh, cell's natural repair system into fixing the DNA. Scientists can then provide the cell with new corrected genetic information, just like giving the cell a cheat sheet for the correct spelling. By uh, using CRISPR with the sgRNA, scientists can potentially correct genetic errors that cause diseases, modify genes to help uh, treat certain conditions, or even make uh, crops even more resilient to pests and diseases. Now, this is what I have already explained to many people uh, in our investment side, but we had not spoken about sgRNA, so that is sgRNA for you. It's short guide RNAs. Now, as I said before, EBT101 is delivered via an adeno-associated virus. The therapy employs a uh, Cas9 nucleus variant, uh, isolated from uh, Staphylococcus uh, aureus, which is uh, smaller than the original uh, Cas9 and is therefore more suitable for in vivo delivery and is able to accommodate two sgRNAs within the AAV because of the reduced size of the Cas9. EBT101 consists of the adeno-associated virus uh, with these two um, uh, uh, sgRNAs, uh, which help it to target three sites. So if you want to uh, cut a long piece of string into three pieces, you need two spots where you want to cut. That's what these two sgRNAs are doing, and the result of that is going to be three segments. So uh, what happens with that is if you assume the uh, human genome to be a straight uh, string, and uh, if you assume that the HIV virus has embedded itself somewhere in between the string to form the continuum, then the two sgRNAs are going to target parts of the HIV genome within the uh, uh, human uh, DNA, and it's going to cut at um, uh, the places associated with specific um, uh, properties, and one of them happens to be the GAG gene. Now, GAG gene is part of the HIV trimer, which I explained to you before. Uh, the HIV trimer consists of GP120 and GP40, and the GP120 holds on to the uh, CD4 T cell with the CD4 receptor, while uh, the GP40 tries to perforate the CD4 and uh, insert the payload, uh, the, the RNA of uh, HIV into the CD4 T cell. So if, um, if this particular therapy is going to cut out the portion for the GAG gene, then uh, the resulting replicated uh, uh, remaining parts of the HIV virus will not have the uh, GP120 uh, or uh, I think uh, I may venture to say even the GP40 and as a result of which it will it will be important in um, uh, catching hold of a CD4 T cell or for that matter uh, penetrating it. So that's uh, that's how it will get deactivated. And um, I have a picture here that you can see uh, which comes from uh, excision itself, which shows what I described just now. Friends, as you can see here, at the very top, you have the strand that I described, that is the human genome. Uh, uh, this, this part shows uh, the points where the cut will take place in an illustrative manner. Two cuts using uh, two guide RNAs, which uh, take the Cas9 to two specific locations. And when the portion is cut, it falls off, and then the other two ends join together and uh, the DNA repair happens automatically, uh, and uh, there is large deletion and no probability of escape for the HIV virus. So the result is curative. So this is how uh, excision uh, bios EBT101 works um, in a very high level uh, description. And friends, as you know, I'm not a scientist, so this is the best I can describe it to you. Uh, I would be looking forward to talk to someone from Excision Bio. I've already reached out to them. And hopefully, if they give us an interview, we can have one of their uh, technical person come and uh, actually explain it to us in layman's terms how this works. Having explained that, I would like to add that um, this uh, activity has been demonstrated in humanized mouse models. So it's, uh, it's sure to work. 
And when we talk about CRISPR and Cas9 in this channel, we have been highlighting uh, the off-base edits and the perils of double-stranded breaks. I would therefore like to specifically highlight that unlike CRISPR Cas9 edits, EBT101 offers safe and effective viral excision using pair of CRISPR Cas guide RNAs uh, that specifically cleave HIV but have minimal similarity to sites in the human genome. And EBT has uh, been uh, has gone through uh, a process where they tried to pattern match and see if the same sequence is found elsewhere in the human DNA and it's not there. So it's absolutely safe. So uh, this is really good news. And now coming to the advantages of uh, FDA fast track designation. So all of you must be wondering, okay, what happens with the fast track designation? FDA uh, fast track designation is a program designed to expedite the development and review of new drugs and therapies that address unmet medical needs particularly for serious or life-threatening conditions. And the primary advantage of receiving fast-track designation is to accelerate the availability of such treatments to patients who need them. Here are some key advantages that I think um, a fast-track designation will give Excision Bio. Faster development and review is the first one. Fast-track designation allows for more frequent communication and collaboration between the drug developer, in this case Excision, and FDA. This means that the uh, uh, clinical development can proceed more rapidly and the review process is also expedited and potential missteps are caught in advance and uh, it's taken care of, potentially leading to quicker approval. And um, unnecessary steps are avoided because the FDA will say, okay, we don't need those extra steps and so on, for example, and uh, that saves time and energy and money and also uh, it expedites the process. And the other advantage I see is more frequent meetings with FDA. So excision will, uh, because it has the fast track decision, will be given the opportunity to have more frequent meetings with FDA to discuss the drugs development, progress, study design, and any questions or concerns they may have uh, that arise during the development process. And this close interaction helps ensure that the development plan is on the right track and that the potential issues are addressed early on. And friends, all these um, uh, close collaboration uh, enables the FDA also to have a very clear understanding that learning curve is along with uh, Excision Bio. So when it comes to clear the clinical uh, trial approval and review of data and all, it's not a, a steep learning curve for FDA. FDA has been participating on the side, therefore, uh, they would be able to uh, do faster approvals. That's my personal opinion. The other advantage they have is the uh, possibility of having a rolling review. When a, uh, when a th therapy developer receives fast track um, uh, designation, uh, then they can submit completed sections of the new drug application or NDA or biologics license application or BLA for review as they become available instead of waiting for the entire application to be complete. This rolling review process can save time and allow for earlier feedback from the FDA so that instead of doing a big bang submission uh, and then FDA coming back and finding a lot of problems in it, as you're developing the BLA or uh, NDA, um, you get feedback, uh, the, the, the developer gets feedback from FDA, and as a result of which uh, the process is much better streamlined and more optimum. And one of the other major benefits is priority review. After a drug receives fast track designation, it also becomes eligible for priority review, which further expedites the review process. Priority review means that FDA aims to complete the review of the drug's application within six months rather than the standard 10 months. So so you're saving around four months out there. So Excision is, uh, has the potential of getting a priority review voucher and uh, that can help them a lot. And uh, they would also get uh, access to accelerated approval and breakthrough therapy designation. So most fast track designation uh, may also increase the chances of a drug receiving accelerated approval or breakthrough therapy designation, which allows for quicker approval based on surrogate endpoints uh, or preliminary evidence of eff effectiveness. So in this case, I think uh, this probably is a moot point for Excision Bio because their endpoint is removing uh, the, the bad parts of the HIV uh, genome and neutralizing it. So that's what they are doing. So they don't have to do any surrogate uh, demonstrations. So it doesn't apply to Excision, but that facility is there for companies which receive fast-track de designation. And it's important to note that while fast-track designation streamlines the development and review process, it doesn't compromise the FDA's 
rigorous standards for safety and efficacy. The FDA still requires substantial evidence to demonstrate that the drug's benefits outweigh the risks, but the program helps prioritize the review of promising therapies that could make a significant impact on patient's life. And then you would ask, why does the FDA not do this for uh, every drug? Uh, if FDA started doing this for every therapy, uh, then they would need a huge staff pool and the cost will be exorbitant and it will drive up the price of the therapy. Or if they operate at the same uh, staff uh, staffing level, then it's going to significantly slow down everything. So right now what they are doing is they are prioritizing specific uh, therapies uh, aimed at specific disease or conditions which are difficult to treat and which need to be expedited and they give them the fast track designation, provide all these facilities. So that's the way of working. So in summary, I will say that it will cut cost and time for excision uh, and also reduce the risk of failure while also providing enhanced FDA guidelines. And uh, all of this helps excision bio succeed and succeed faster than they would have if they were on the standard track. Now I know from past experience that one of you will ask me uh, in the comments, when will this be available? Another will ask, when, will it, when is it coming to India? So, well, that is a difficult question to answer. As per clinicaltrials.gov, uh, on their website, we have uh, e excisions study of EBT 101 in uh, Averemic HIV-1 infected adults on stable ART. It has identified a number of NCT 051443.86. I'll put this in the description as well. And this study has a primary completion date of December 2024 and a study completion date of March 2025. So that's the outer limit. And this is for uh, phase one of two studies. So there'll be a phase two as well. So right now, I think they're looking at the safety aspect of it. So for more details, you can always visit the uh, site and uh, look at NCT 051-44386 and uh, get more information uh, and stay up to date there. I have already reached out to Excision Bio via email. Uh, for an interview and I'll keep you updated if they allow one of their experts to interview with us then we'll have something similar to what we had with American Gene uh, uh, Technologies and uh, they can really explain uh, how this thing works and we'll I'll try to get your questions as well so that uh, we can ask them and get a lot of clarification out there. So friends, that's all for today, folks, and uh, this is really good news, uh, and I would like to thank uh, Remy once more. Thanks, Remy, and um, uh, take care, and I'll be back soon with the next update video. Bye for now.